Good afternoon, and welcome to the Church of St. Mary. We welcome all visitors and members to this celebration of the Eucharist. As a community of believers, we gather in prayer in order that we might encounter Christ through word and sacrament. Just a reminder that the singing during Mass will be done by the cantor. We invite you to hum along or listen with your ears and heart as the words are sung. Together, let us give thanks to God who brings us together to strengthen and grace our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good evening, everyone. As we come on this 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, we come to recognize a God who has been reconciled with us, and who invites us to be reconciled with one another. And so as we gather on this Labor Day weekend, we give thanks to God for the gift of the work of our hands. And we use those same hands as we lift them up in prayer and praise to the God who gives us and grants us his mercy today. Lord Jesus, you are healing for the sick. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are forgiveness for the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are food for the hungry. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, 
you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. spirit and life you have the words of everlasting life alleluia 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 the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew Jesus said to his disciples, if your brother or sister sins against you, go and tell them their fault between you and them alone. If they listen to you, you have won them over. If they do not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they refuse to listen to them, tell the church. If they refuse to listen even to the church, then treat them as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. In that good old pre-pandemic days, that seems years ago now, doesn't it? But nonetheless, in those good old days of the pre-pandemic, there were moments, occasions, opportunities where people who were celebrating a milestone in their life maybe a significant birthday or a significant anniversary would take the opportunity, they and their families, to have a party, perhaps have an open house for a wedding anniversary, whatever the occasion and the event might require. It seems as though, at least for the present moment, those kinds of opportunities and occasions and events seem to be like permanently put on hold. But I can still remember in those good old pre-pandemic days, going to just such an event. It was a a 60th wedding anniversary, and the couple, of course, were still madly in love with one another after all those years, imagine. But there they were. They had an open house, their children did, for these two now elderly people. And they stood in line and greeted friends, neighbors, of course, family members, relatives, and, of course, their parish priest. And as I went up to them to congratulate them, this was years ago now, on their 60th wedding anniversary, I, of course, took the opportunity to shake their hands. Seems like that's gone now forever as well. But nonetheless, as I greeted them and congratulated them, I asked them, what's the secret to your success? 
What's the secret to 60 years of marriage? How is it that the two of you have gotten to this moment at this point in time in your life? And the husband, kind of a prankster himself, looked at me with a smile and a twinkle on his face and a twinkle in his eye. And he said two things, Father Steve. Number one, I've learned I should never speak on behalf of my wife. And I haven't done that, he said, for the last, God knows, 40-some years. Took me 20 years, though, he said, to figure that out. But I never speak on her behalf. That's the first secret. Second one, he said, this too took me many, many years to figure out. But eventually, he said, I realized one morning, as her and I were lying in bed, she sound asleep, but I, having tossed and turned most of the night because of an argument that the two of us had got into the night before. And as I looked at this incredible, beautiful wife of mine, lying there sound asleep, he said, I came to realize this second secret, truth, to what became the success to our marriage. And that was this. I want to be married more than I want to be right. I want to be married more than I want to be right. It's amazing, isn't it? What a great insight to come to that realization that he wanted to choose a relationship over choosing to be right. Oh, if all of us could eventually get to that truth and embrace that insight each and every day of our lives. Because isn't that the reason why you and I struggle to do what Jesus invites us to do in the gospel for this Sunday? Why reconciliation and forgiveness is so incredibly difficult? Why it's so difficult for you and I to go directly to the person who has offended us or whom we have offended and for them to come directly to us and one-on-one for you and I to sit down and have a conversation and to be able to seek reconciliation and forgiveness in this relationship? Why is it so difficult for you and I to do that? Well, because every time you and I have a conflict with someone, you and I hate trying to go about resolving it. Why? Because we have already convinced ourselves that in order for this to happen, in order for the resolution to the conflict to take place, I need to prove to this person that I'm right, which means they have to be wrong. That I'm going to win, which means they have to lose. And my friends, that's why we despise conflict resolution. Because we're competitive by nature. Why we came into this world kicking and screaming, survival of the fittest. Why it is about being right and it's about winning. My friends, that works maybe in the business world and on a football field or a soccer field or a wrestling match, wherever sport we might be playing. But any time you and I choose to bring that into relationships, being right so that somebody has to be wrong, winning so that somebody has to lose, well then, chances are, in the long run, we all lose. That's why Paul says to us in today's second reading, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is the fulfillment of the law. When we love our neighbor, when we strive to recognize, as this elderly man did at some point in time in the marriage, that he wanted to be married more than he wanted to be right, why, the great insight in that is what? That he finally realized the truth, that where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Notice Jesus doesn't say, I'm going to be with this person or that person because they're right and that person is wrong. No. Jesus says at the end of today's gospel, there am I in the midst of them. How hard it is for you and I to believe that God is actively present in our everyday lives wherever two or three people are gathered. That God isn't just out there, up there, or in the Blessed Sacrament tabernacle. 
but that God chooses to dwell wherever two or three people gather in his name. There am I in the midst of them. And that was the beautiful insight of that elderly man because he recognized that God chooses to dwell in the midst of every married couple because there are two there. And in the midst of them, their God chooses to dwell. Where reconciliation and forgiveness oftentimes needs to be the work of the day that is part of being a husband or a wife. It's also part of being a friend. It's also part of being a family member. It's also part of being a sibling. But it's whatever relationship we find ourselves in. Can you and I have the insight and the ability to say, I would rather be a friend than be right. I would rather be married than be right. I would rather be a member of this world rather than having to be right, rather than having to be Democrats, rather than having to be Republican, or whatever it is that we might call ourselves. My friends, all of that is insignificant when it comes to love, which is the fulfillment of the law. So let us come today, we who receive once again God's forgiveness, God's grace, God's mercy, and God's presence. Because we are more than two or three gathered here in his name. And he is here in the midst of us. And he invites us to recognize that it's better to welcome a relationship, to welcome Christ in our midst whenever we gather with another or two or three or however many we gather, whether we can do it now in post-pandemic days or not, whenever we gather, God is in the midst of us. So let us welcome him. Let us choose to fulfill the law. Let us love. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered to death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gather together, let us lift our voices in prayer as we offer to God our petitions. For the church, that we love our neighbor as we practice Christ's model of healing and reconciliation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders working to end racial injustice and violence, and for communities that long to be healed, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for just wages and safe working conditions for all who labor and that the unemployed will find work. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer.
for those unwilling to reconcile with others, and for those who do not know how, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all among us who are suffering, especially the sick and the dying, and for those who have died, remembering Melvina and Claude Masters and Gordy Chalmers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As we celebrate Labor Day this weekend, we give thanks for the work of our hands, and we pray for the safety of all travelers, military serving our country, students and teachers beginning a new school year, and farmers who begin the fall harvest. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of grace, we call upon your name. We ask for your help as we give you thanks for your abiding presence in our life. Hear our petitions, answer them according to your will. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, He took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew the church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray for our daily bread, as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray.
Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Before we go to announcements today, first of all, the prayer team is available after Mass uh, in the gallery rooms uh, for anybody who would like to um, stop there and have the prayer team uh, pray with you over uh, for any particular uh, intentions that you might have. Again, that's in the gallery room at the end of Mass today. Secondly, due to a funeral that I have at St. Clair's in Clare City this coming Tuesday, uh, the Mass here in Wilmer on Tuesday is being moved from 12 noon to 9 o'clock in the morning. So please be aware that the weekday Mass here at St. Mary's in Wilmer on Tuesday will be at 9 o'clock rather than 12 noon. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.